Good afternoon and welcome to the Xerox PARC Forum. This is an open forum and it will be videotaped. My name is David White and I'm from the Xerox PARC Document Hardware Lab. I will be hosting our forums just uh, for today and next week. After that, Paul Aoki will be our forum coordinator. The theme for my forums has been Science at the Edge of Science Fiction. Before I introduce today's speaker, I'd like to mention that at next week's forum, February 15th, Mr. Chip Walter, an author and future trends consultant, will be our speaker. He will probably be the speaker that gets closest to my theme when he presents his topic, Boldly Going, the fun and fantastic connections between science and science fiction. Today's speaker is Dr. Chris Duffield. Dr. Duffield is a visiting scholar at Stanford University's Material Science and Engineering Department. He's, a direct, he's the director of the Virtual Information Lab and web host of IPTQ.org. By the way, IPT stands for Insulin Potential Therapy. He'll probably fill you, on, fill you in on what that means. He'll also follow my forum theme, Science at the Edge of Science Fiction. Since he'll discuss the topic, the VID, or the virtual information domain, is the computer. Discovering the virtual information domain, transcending Moore's Law, and Vidic technologies beyond imagination. In biological, physical, and psychological domains, there are many anomalous phenomena. Dr. Duffield will show that this could be explained by an information infrastructure in the vacuum separate from, but interacting with matter and energy. He has named this the Virtual Information Domain, or the VID. In discussing this topic, he will briefly address information physics, a selection of observed anomalies, Vidic technology and business possibilities, and a research agenda. Please join me in welcoming our, wel our uh, honored speaker, Dr. Chris Duffield. Such a, a wonderful topic, science is yet science fiction, and also uh, to part um, for having this forum. I'm a regular, I come just about every week. Um, part, of course, is, is a wonderful place. Okay, one, two, three. So anyway, thanks to, oh, now I can hear myself, yeah. Um, thanks to Dave White and to, uh, to Park. And um, I have a lot to say. Um, I'll take questions afterwards. And so let's get, get moving. First, I'll give a little ad, like he said, for IPTQ.org, my, my website. Um, insulin potentiation therapy is a, a better, safer, faster, cheaper um, way to uh, deliver medicine. Um, it actually uses insulin to create hypoglycemia, which somehow delivers drugs better and makes them work in about a tenth of the normal dose. Um, it works really great for cancer and many other diseases. It's been ignored for 75 years, sadly, tragically, um, although it would be legal and ethical for any doctor to practice it today. Um, no FDA approval needed. So anyway, this is my big project. Um, I put that, that website together, and uh, there you go. Welcome to visit. Mahatma Gandhi uh, said this, first they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, then you win. Well, in science and technology, it's a little bit different. First they ignore you, then they laugh at you, then they fight you, and then they say, well, we already knew that. So is there anyone here who already knew it and is here just to see if I get it right? One, okay. You? Oh, okay. <laughs> Any visitors from the future? Oh. They can't reveal themselves. OK, so this is my prescience, or pre-science, track record. Um, in 1956, when I was a little kid, kid, I noticed that continents seemed to fit together, um, you know, South America and Africa. 
And then by the time I got into college, um, plate tectonics was happening. In 1971, at the first national conference on New Worlds, which I just stumbled into in uh, Carbondale, Illinois, when I was chasing Buckminster Fuller, um, I gave this wild I'd talk at the end where I said, happy birthday to the world brain. Well, in the 1990s, of course, we have the World Wide Web showing up. Uh, in 1972 through 76, I did work on what I called technoecology, which is looking at industrial systems by analogy to biological systems. And um, it's sort of like the body of our physical world, our society. And in 1992, um, there was a book called Bionomics that got published. And, and more recently, there was, uh, you know, Bill Gates is talking about the digital nervous system and, and so forth. So it's like maybe 20 years ahead. Uh, in 1982, I came up with this invention for shoes that had rounded heels on them. And uh, although someone patented that about 10 years later, um, and I didn't do anything with it, uh, no one else has either. So hopefully in the next few years, that'll, that'll come out. Um, and then in 1995, I came up with this idea for virtual information. Um, and submitted an abstract to the Consciousness Conference number two in Tucson. And it got accepted, and I showed up and did a poster there. And, um, you know, who knows when this is really going to come, but I wanted to get it on the, on the record. Um, and today is actually the first time that I've, I've given a talk about this to anyone, except, except my friends. So why this talk? This idea has haunted me since uh, 1995. And Everywhere I go, I feel sort of like I'm, you know, in the 1880s or something like that. It's like, it's, the computer technology is so cute. You know, it's really fun. It really does great stuff. But, oh, what's coming? So I, I got tired of just being in that state and thought I'd just plant some seeds here. And uh, maybe we can speed up evolution. You know, maybe, um, maybe this can happen in the next few years rather than waiting for 20. Um, it would be fun to find people to work with. And um, also, like I said, I want to get this in the record. So this is being videotaped, and in the, in the future, people will be watching this. <laughs> um, OK, here's the outline. I'll, I'll talk about the, uh, the Vidic hypothesis. It's vid, not vid. It is spelled vid, but um, I just capitalize it because I, I think it's important. Maybe people later, they'll make it smaller or something. But, um, and then the second part, I'll talk about anomalies and explanations. Anomalies, things that, that we know in our physical world that, that just don't make sense unless you buy into a hypothesis, something like this. And then in part three, I'll have fun talking about um, what we can see in the future, possibly, if the bid is real and if this really comes to pass. And then finally, conclusions. OK, the Vedic hypothesis, it's a different perspective. X-Files, they say the truth is out there. What I say is that the truth is in here. It's, it's like it's inside our reality. It's not outside our reality. So I want to sing the glories of materialism first. In materialism, I define it. I mean, this is how I explain it, summarize it. Everything is matter and energy. Information is just configurations of matter and energy. And vacuum is nothing. OK, that's what we all learned in school. Materialism is great. Materialism rules. Materialism is a great triumph in science, technology, business, the whole world around us. I mean, I just had a tour with Dave of the uh, facilities and uh, here, at, here at Xerox. And you know, the projects they're working on, fantastic. There's this fabulous history. And, and you know, you watch Moore's Law, and things are getting smaller, faster, cheaper, better. Um, one of my favorite places is the, is the Computer History Museum over in, in Mountain View. Wonderful place where you can go from, you know, where, where each bit goes from being a, a tube this big to, you know, or several tubes, actually, on a circuit board that big, down to where you have millions of, of, uh, of gates on, on a single chip, you know, that, that size. But materialism is limited. There are all these unexplained anomalies, which I'll talk about later. Uh, there's limits of space, time, matter, energy, and physical laws. Even Moore's law has uh, limits. There, you know, people don't know exactly when the end will come. You know, according to our current paradigm, but that um, we're going to run down to where you only have a few atoms per gate, and then then what do you do? Um, and there, also in the material world, there's limitation of appreciation and fulfillment. Um, you know, there's wealth unfairness. Um, 
people get blind uh, to the fact that there might be something besides the material world. And, and we have war. And so the, the material world, to me, I mean, it's endlessly fascinating, but by itself, it's, it's, it's really, it's ultimately boring and empty. I mean, talk to, talk to billionaires, you know, they, they have everything, but, you know, sometimes, you know, they feel like they have nothing. So I think going beyond materialism looks better. We can incorporate it. It's great for what it is, but I think there's more. First of all, it explains many anomalies. Second, it seems to open new sciences and technologies, just huge vistas, and um, new possibilities for fulfillment and appreciation, even of the material world, and um, a bigger understanding of who and what we are as human beings. Uh, we have such a limited view of what we are. And I think that it's going to lead to us all having enough wealth, like Buckminster Fuller used to say, for all human beings to live like kings, only happier. So here's the Vedic hypothesis. Number one, that there is more than just matter and energy. Number two, that information can exist separate from matter and energy, which I figured out later, oh, that means the vacuum. And, and it can interact with them. And number three, the vacuum, instead of being nothing, is almost everything. So here are the new words. There's virtual information, virtual information domain, the vid, vidic, having to do with the vid. Um, oh, virtual information is information that exists separate from matter and energy. The domain is where it hangs out, wherever that is. Um, Vidix is the study of the vid <coughs> and sy Vidic systems. Uh, and then another word I just came up with is smart vacuum. I mean, uh, there are people who work with smart materials. They work with smart bombs. This is smart vacuum. And then also a, a new notation. We have, um, I borrowed these from physics. Uh, they use it for magnetic fields where the field goes, line goes into the paper. That's the X. And where it comes out of the paper, it's the uh, little dot. And so that, that's into the vid and out of the vid. So the vid, wherever it is, you push stuff into it, and then you take stuff out of it. And then so I came up with a, a new logo, which is, um, well, you can call it a vid port or a vid link or whatever that combines the two in, in an uh, infinity sign. So the vid really is, is not totally new. I mean, it's an ancient idea. Plato used to talk about the world of pure forms. Um, in the Middle Ages, they used to argue about, and you've probably learned this, that about the number of angels that could stand on the head of a pen. Um, more recently, David Bohm talked about the implicate order. He's a physicist. Rupert Sheldrake, a biologist in, uh, in England, uh, has talked about morphic fields. He, he thinks that the universe has memory and he calls it something like morphic fields, that where it, the universe stores memory. And, and he applies this to physical systems everywhere from cells or molecules up to uh, planets and galaxies. But um, he thinks that the mechanism, the mechanism he talks about is resonance, that physical systems resonate with these fields. In sci-fi, they um, science fiction, they talk about, well, the force and the matrix. And there are many, many other examples. Um, I, I think that the word vid, virtual information domain, is, is a better word for this because it, it's more comprehensive and it, it implies not, not just memory, not just resonance, but a whole host of different complex phenomena and systems <coughs> that are existing in the vacuum. And this leaves room for um, science and technology to move forward. So the physics of the vid, Claude Shannon, talked about information. He, he's probably the best standard theory about information. He talked about, he developed information theory and applied it to thermodynamics.